Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be going through a practice problem in practice problem 3 called recursive A2I. So what are we supposed to do in this program? We are supposed to convert a string of digits into integers. And they gave us a ton of hints here and a, ton, and a few hints at the back because they know that this is a really difficult practice problem. And even I personally took a while to wrap my head around it and solve it eventually. So before explaining how the solution to this program works, um, let me just follow uh, the steps they have given us to try to solve this um, practice problem, right? So let me download the resource files. So here we have the file that they have given us and in the top we have a few library declarations that might come in handy and then we have the function prototype of the function that we are supposed to complete and then we have the main function and in this main function first we prompt the user for a positive integer uh, and it's going to be stored in a string input and then uh, this for loop is just checking if every single character in the string is a digit and then afterwards uh, we want to use the convert function uh, to convert the input from a string to an integer. So basically this is going to be an A2I function, right? So let's solve this practice problem. So let's follow the hints that is given to us step by step and solve this problem. And after uh, writing the code, I'll go into more detail in how this, uh, how the code that we have written actually works. So first we want to get the index of the last character and then convert the last character into its numeric value and store it in an int variable. So how do we do that? First and foremost, we need the a length variable to just store the length of the string. And then we want to convert the last character in the string into an int. So int number, perhaps last number, is going to be equals to input length minus 1. So this is how we get the very last character in our string, all right? And then, um, as you can see, this is a character, and if we store the character in an int, maybe the input given to us is 9. And then if we take the length minus 1, it's just going to be uh, indexing into the 0th index of the array, which is going to be 9. And then if we store 9 in this int last number variable, what we'll be getting is uh, 57 because a character is just going to be automatically converted into the decimal value for it uh, according to the ASCII chart. So how we want to convert 57 to 9 is just going to be minus uh, 48. All right. So this in fact works for all the other uh, digits from uh, 0 to 9. We can just minus 48 and then we will be left with the decimal value okay so next step we want to remove the last character by adding a null terminated so let's do that so input length minus one we want to replace it with a null terminator just to signify to our computer that we uh, that in fact the last character is not there anymore and it's uh, replaced with a null terminator it's backslash zero all right and then we want to return this value plus 10 times the integer value of the new shortened string. So return 10 uh, times the integer value of the new shortened string. So it's going to be convert input plus last number. So once again, they want us to return this value. Okay, so let me just add this to the front. So they want us to return this value plus 10 times the integer value of the new shorted string. And the new shorted string is just going to be the input, right? Because I'm just updating uh, the input um, to become a little shorter after we store the last number uh, right earlier. So now this is where you guys uh, might be a little lost as to perhaps how does this work right so let me just move over to my ipad to draw out um, draw out and explain how the code works so what's happening here what's happening here um, let's say the input to this was a string of one of one two three four 
5, okay? And then what they're doing here is we are taking the 5 from the end, okay? So 5 plus, and then we have the rest of the numbers here. Plus 1, 2, 3, 4 times 10. In fact, if you evaluate this, this comes up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the very end, okay? And then what are we doing again? So this is what we are passing to the convert function, right? Okay. And then we are actually passing this again to the convert function. So let's pass it to the convert function. And the convert function is going to return 4 plus 1, 2, 3 times 10. Okay. And this is also going to be returning to a 1, 2, 3, 4. And if we go lower, it's going to be this 1, 2, 3, which is going to be passed into the convert function. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, oh, sorry. So this is going to be uh, return 3 plus 1, 2 times 10. Okay. And in fact, even this is just 1, 2, 3. And then we are passing this into the convert function. And it's going to be 2 plus 1 times 10. Right. It's going to be 12. Okay. So this is basically the last character and then the rest is just passed here same for this 3 is here and 2 is and 12 is here and so on and if you notice and then uh, once again we have the one here and then this one is going to be passed to the convert function and now what do we do we are left with a string of just one so what we do here is, you see how they mentioned that uh, you need a base case when creating a recursive function. So now that we have reached all the way until the end of the recursion, we realize that the base case is if the length is equals to one, okay, we just return um, the uh, input zero minus 48 okay so now what's gonna happen is we're gonna be passing in one here okay the index one times 10 plus 2 12 and then this 12 is gonna be passed into here and 12 times 10 120 plus 3 123 and then 123 times 10 is gonna be 100 uh 120 1230 1230 plus 4 again is going to be 143 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and then uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 times 10 plus 5 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 okay so now you guys see what's actually happening okay so if you guys don't understand it uh, just go a little slowly so for example let me use let me perhaps use a simpler example like one, two, three. So what are we gonna do here? We are, so for example, we have the convert function and then we are passing in one, two, three. What's gonna happen here is gonna be the convert function is gonna return three plus convert 12 times 10, okay? And then what, what's going to happen? This convert 12 is going to return 1 plus, sorry, it's going to return 2 plus convert 1 times 10. What is this convert 1 going to do? This convert 1 is the base case scenario. And then finally, we can do a little bit of calculations without um, going without recursing again. So here, once that the input is one, we go into the base case. The base case is just return, um, return one, the character one minus forty eight, and it's gonna be uh, basically the input one. So here we substitute this convert one to one, and then we are remaining with the twelve, and then this twelve. We can replace here 12 times 10, 120, then we plus 123, and then we return here, and the value for this is 123 int format. Okay, so don't worry if you guys don't get this completely. 
um, I'll be completing the code and hopefully uh, once I complete the code, it makes much more sense. So obviously you guys have noticed that we have a base case and I haven't added it yet. So the base case is gonna be, um, let me just move this input into the top. So the basic case is just gonna be uh, if the length is equals to one, what's gonna happen? We want to be returning um, the input zero minus 48, all right? So this is when the length is one. And if it's not, then what we'll be doing is what we just did below. Okay, and that's about it actually. So let's run this program. And if you guys still don't get it, um, don't worry. Uh, practice doing some recursion questions online, or perhaps watch uh, some tutorials on recursion because recursion is really really difficult. Like it took me a very long time to. Um, actually understand and learn recursion and it's really really difficult to wrap your hand, head around so you have to work hard and practice and uh, practice you know practice makes perfect so now let's uh, make and yeah I'm missing semicolon before making let me just add in the semicolons uh, all right so uh, make C let me just see the A to I make A to I okay so now dot slash a to i, let's enter a positive integer and our positive integer perhaps 1000 and we print a thousand. Okay, let's try 50. 50 and we get 50 back and let's try 110 and we get 110 back and let's try uh, 980 and we get 980 back. So how do I know it's working? Because we are only printing uh, an int because of this um, percent %i, so I know that it's working. All right, so hope you guys understood and benefited from this video. If you guys did, I would appreciate if you guys hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions, comment down below and I'll try to help you guys. And see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.